Hey everybody, uh, so in this video what we're going to do is uh, take a look at the capacitors storage API in a little bit more depth. So this is kind of going to be an extension to a tutorial I just recently published on the blog, so I'll link to that as well. And in that tutorial we basically just quickly walk through building uh, this little service that we're making use of here in Stencil. And this is basically just a little storage service that provides a set, get, and uh, remove function. And this is going to easy, uh, easily allow us to store simple values in storage and also get those from storage. So rather than just using the normal browser local storage, we're actually using the capacitor storage API. And what that will do basically is use uh, kind of the most appropriate storage or simple storage mechanism based on the platform that it is running on. So in the case of uh, PWA, when the application is running on the web, uh, it's just going to use the standard local storage. Uh, but when the application is running on say iOS, it's going to use user defaults. And when it's running on Android, it's going to use um, shared preferences. Uh, so that's a way to store simple data in a sort of native way rather than relying on the browser's local storage, which is fine in the general sense, but there is the possibility that local storage can be wiped by the operating system to free up space and although that's not going to happen uh, often it is possible and the native alternative here provides a bit more stability in that sense uh, i mentioned in the blog post i also sort of don't personally like using any kind of local storage whether it's native or not if i'm storing any kind of important data that i don't want lost um, but obviously depending on your application you might just want to store some simple data in local storage. So we've already gone through building this in the tutorial and I'm not going to talk through it again. What I actually wanted to do was just take a look at the storage API in a little more depth. So I've got the storage API up on the screen now. And so this is the capacitor documentation and you can see here what the various methods are that we can use. Uh, the ones that we're making use of are here. We have get, set and remove and there's a couple other methods as well. And so you can see here, if you go uh, scroll through the documentation, you can see some examples of how to use it. And you can see uh, the API here, what sort of values uh, it expects. And so this is enough information for you to use the storage API, but you might not really know how it works exactly. Uh, for example, I said that uh, on iOS, it will use user defaults for storage. And on Android, uh, it's going to use shared preferences. But uh, in this case, at least there isn't, I don't think at least, uh, it's not mentioned in the documentation how that actually works. So what I want to do in this video is use this as a little exercise to see how you can sort of get more information if what is in the documentation or what you can find through uh, Google, for example, isn't enough, you need to know more. Uh, all of the code for Capacitor and for Ionic, uh, for all these open source projects, all of the code is available uh, for us to look at. And so everything it's doing, we can see. And so it's just a matter of getting familiar with that code base and understanding where to look and how to understand what's going on. So we're going to do that in this tutorial. We're going to take a look at how this storage API works uh, by taking a look at the source code of Capacitor. And this is also going to give us a little bit more of an understanding as to how a Capacitor plugin works. And so I'm not going to be covering how to create your own plugins in this video, uh, but you will start to get a sense of the basic idea of how they are created. And then in another tutorial or video, uh, I'll start sort of going through that in more depth. So what we're going to do is start off just by opening the capacitor documentation. Our goal here is to get a better understanding of how the storage API works. So first step, come to the capacitor documentation. And if you look at this, obviously there's a lot of uh, files and folders, uh, unless you are already familiar with the basic structure of a capacitor, you might not know even where to start looking. So a good sort of uh, starting point, I find at least, is just to search. And so what you do is just search something related to what you're looking for. So in this case, perhaps storage would be a good starting point because we're interested in the storage API. So if I search for storage, make sure you're searching in this repository. I'm going to get a few results here. And uh, you can see here we get the documentation uh, showing up, which we don't want. Uh, there's notification storage here. That might be what we're interested in. Uh, it's not in this case. And here we have web storage, web storage plugin. So that's looking like what we are interested in. So we can then just open that file and we can take a look at uh, what's going on in here. 
And so you might not understand all of what is happening here and that's fine. Uh, but we can use this as a starting point and we can sort of start, uh, we can start to see how things are working even if we don't fully understand it. Okay, so looking at this file, if we assume we have no prior knowledge of this, uh, which I have looked at before, I do sort of know what's going on here, but we'll pretend we don't. Uh, and we can see here that we're importing web plugin from index. Maybe we don't really know what that means, that's fine. Uh, import storage plugin from core plugin definitions. Well now, <clears throat> from that we can probably kind of tell that, okay, well this is kind of the definition of the storage plugin itself. That might be something that we want to look at. So we'll make a note of that. We'll come back to that in a second. I mean, you can see here, we're creating a class called storage plugin web, extends web plugin, implements storage plugin. So at this point, we're probably thinking, okay, if this is storage plugin web, we probably, maybe we have storage plugin iOS, storage plugin Android, for example. And if we look at the actual implementation of this, we can see that we have all those methods that were mentioned in the documentation. Uh, those are being implemented here. So we have get, set, remove, keys, clear. And so these are the methods that we are able to use. So I'll just quickly jump back into the documentation there. You can see those there. Uh, and so this is the implementation of that. And you can see in this case, if we take a look at uh, get, for example, uh, it takes in a key, which is a string. It returns a promise, which resolves with a value that is a string. So that's going to be the value it gets from storage. And you can see here, we're returning a new promise and we are resolving with this value and we are grabbing that value from the browser's local storage. So we can see that this is the browser implementation of the storage plugin. And so this shows us exactly how it works uh, for the browser environment. We can see that we're using window.local storage to store that value or to get the value in this instance, but it still doesn't tell us what is happening for iOS and Android. Okay, so let's continue our search then. So I mentioned before that we're importing this storage plugin from core plugin definitions. That seems like a, you know, another good place to sort of continue our search. So that's um, upper folder. So we'll go back to web and then to source. And we can see here core plugin definitions. So let's open that file. And if we take a look at this, we can kind of see that this is where all of the uh, plugins are being uh, defined here. We have these uh, interfaces being de uh, defined. And so if you have a general understanding of what interfaces are, basically this is defining the APIs for each of these plugins. So if we scroll down here uh, for a little bit, we can see that, for example, the background task plugin has uh, two methods here. We have a before exit and a finish. The actual implementation details aren't here but this just describes the, the type of that uh, plugin. So we aren't interested in everything else. So what we're going to do is search specifically for stuff related to storage. And so we're gonna get some other stuff here. For example, this is related to the device info plugin. Uh, that's not what we want. So we'll just keep searching through for instances of storage here. And then eventually we get to this storage plugin, which is what we are interested in. And you can again see here that this is just the API for the storage plugin. So we have get, set, remove, clear, keys. These are the methods that we can call to interact with that plugin. We still aren't getting any more implementation details here. So at this point, we've hit a bit of a wall. Uh, we still don't know how the iOS and Android implementations work. So what we could do, for example, we could say, come back to the root folder of capacity here and we might be like, okay, well, I want stuff related to iOS and Android. I'm gonna look for that. Uh, we can see here, we have an iOS folder and we've got Capacitor, Cordova. It's like, well, you know, you might try and figure out which folder will be best to go into. We don't really, we're not dealing with Cordova plugins here. So we probably wanna go into the Capacitor folder. And then we get to more folders and, you know, you might get a bit lost. So you can go that way. You keep searching through the folders and maybe eventually you find um, something related to what you're looking for. Or again, we can just come back to the search bar, search for storage, and just start looking through this list again until we find something related to storage and specifically Android or iOS. And so we're seeing these .java files popping up, which is good because that is um, native Android. So if we found something related to storage in Java, that would be good. But this uh, example is the file system, which we're not interested in, even though it does relate somewhat to storage. So we'll keep looking go on to the second page and I'm just going to keep scrolling through these um, 
results here until I get something related to storage and we have something here. So we can see in this folder uh, at Android capacitor source main Java com get capacitor plugin storage.java, we have uh, the actual storage plugin being defined for Android. So we definitely want to open that up and then we're going to continue our search and see if we can find uh, the one related to iOS as well. And on this page, on page three now, we have at iOS capacitor, capacitor plugins storage.swift. That uh, is the native language used for um, iOS as well as uh, Objective-C. So we have this storage.swift file, which is defining the storage plugin implementation for iOS. So with both of these up now, we can now look at the actual implementations of the plugin for the native platforms. So if we open up the iOS example, again, we might not fully understand everything that is happening here, but uh, we can see that we're defining cap storage plugin, and then we have some methods here. And the kinds of methods we want to look for, obviously we have something here called load. Maybe we don't know what that does. But then we have one called get, and we have one called set and remove and keys. So that is starting to look like the kinds of methods that we are using uh, in the uh, API here. So this is probably, we can assume, related to uh, how it is implemented for iOS. So now if we specifically look at this get implementation here, uh, again, we might not understand how Swift works, so there's gonna be some funky stuff here, but we could probably see that this is a function called get and it's pa uh, passing in something called call, which is of type cap plugin call, which is a capacitor plugin call. And then we have this guard let key equal, uh, equals call dot get string key. And again, maybe you don't know what this is doing. And in this case, we're passing in uh, the key that we want to get from storage. And then we have let value equals get defaults dot string. And then we're passing in that key there. And so this is kind of the actual implementation of the plugin. So we have this, this bit, which is getting the key uh, or getting the value that is passed in through capacitor. So that's being passed from our web code uh, through to capacitor, which is then being passed into this native code. We also have this cool dot resolve, which is us passing that value back from native land to our browser. And so what's happening in the middle here is the actual implementation of the plugin on iOS. And so what we're doing is we're saying let value equals get defaults dot string. Uh, and again, if we don't understand iOS and Swift, we might not know what that means. But if we do a Google search, we can probably find out. So if I now search get defaults, I'll search iOS get defaults because I don't know what that means and I can't type apparently. I'm trying standing up for the first time filming. so. So we're seeing some stuff here to get iOS device system language, uh, locale.get default. Let's say iOS, let's get rid of that um, brackets there. And we have this result now, user defaults. And that's from the official Ionic, Ionic documentation, the Apple documentation. So we'll open that up and we can see we have this user defaults class here. That says an inheritance, uh, sorry, an interface to the user's defaults database where you store key value pairs persistently across launches of your app. And so this is sounding like exactly the kind of thing that we would be using for storage. And it's basically the same way that uh, the browser's local storage works. And we can read the overview here for more details, which I won't do. Uh, but we can see at this point, this is the system that is being used to store those values. And so at this point, we understand that when Capacitor is attempting to store our simple key value data, if we're running on iOS, what it's going to be doing is using this user defaults to do that. And we could do the same thing with our Java implementation here for Android. And so there's more Java-y stuff happening in here. Again, it's going to help if you understand Java and you can recognize this kind of stuff. But if you don't, you can still get a lot of value from it. And so we have a similar sort of thing here where we have get, set, remove keys again. The actual implementation is different because we're using a different language. But again, we can see we've got a plugin call being passed in. We can see that we're getting that uh, value that is being passed in there by uh, 
doing cool.getString. We're also passing that value back to a capacitor with a resolve there. And again, what's in the middle is the actual implementation of the plugin on Android. So in this case, we are using prefs.getString. So uh, in this case, we might be, okay, what's prefs in this code? So let's search for instances of prefs here. And we can see here at the top, it's being defined. We have private shared preferences prefs. And so at this point, we think, okay, what is shared preferences? So as I've already said at the beginning, that's the mechanism that Android, we're using on Android to store this data, but we might not know what that is. So we're going to Google that and we'll Google Android, Java, shared preferences. And the first result that pops up here is from the Android documentation. And we have this uh, documentation here. And it says uh, interface for accessing and modifying preference data returned by get shared preferences. Uh, so this is sounding similar to the iOS implementation uh, since, since, it, uh, since it is an interface for accessing and modifying preference data. Uh, we're talking about simple sort of uh, preference values, settings, that kind of thing. So, and we can scroll down and have a look at the methods and we can see we have the kind of, I guess, uh, methods you'd expect here. We have contains, checks whether the preferences contains a preference for a specific uh, key. And if we take a look at what we're actually doing here, when we actually um, store this value, we're doing uh, prefs.getString. So if we search this for get string, we can see that a method pops up here. It says retrieve a string value from preferences. So this is the exact implementation we're using. We're using shared preferences on Android and specifically, we're using the get string method of shared preferences to get a specific string value from storage. So with a bit of poking around in the source code, we can get information about uh, how this stuff works and everything we could possibly want to know is in here. This is after all the source code. So everything it's doing is in here somewhere. The trouble is in actually understanding what's happening and knowing where to find it. But if you start doing this stuff, if you can't find what you need in the documentation or in tutorials or wherever, if you start just poking around in the source code, trying to find things and understand them, uh, eventually you'll get better at understanding how to do that. You'll start to become familiar with the project itself. Uh, you'll understand where things are likely to be in the capacitor project, where they're likely to be in the ionic project. And as you do this, you're going to get better at that and you're going to be able to find things easier. But uh, when you first start doing this, you're probably just going to spend a lot of time looking at things you might not understand and that's fine, uh, you'll get better at it over time. And once you are good at it, it's a sort of really, I guess, empowering feeling because you can always find what you need without having to rely on the documentation or on other people uh, explaining it. Okay, so I hope this video was useful or interesting or something, I hope you got something out of it. Uh, if you do like this sort of video, let me know, it's a little bit different, uh, but I think it is a valuable skill, even though you know, it's not directly related to coding. Uh, so let me know if you like it and I'll see you in the next video.